What's going on guys? I'm just here to talk a little bit about this book that I read a few years ago but I've recently come back to and have been thinking about recently. Um, it's called Hiroshima and it was written by John Hersey, uh, published in 1945, the same year as the Hiroshima disaster, the Hiroshima casualties and the essentially the one of the most catastrophic events in human history, um, certainly the most uh, impactful deployment of atomic arms, um, well, at least the first impactful deployment of atomic arms on, on civilians. Um, and uh, so the reason I wanted to talk about this book a little bit is is that, you know, uh, I, was, I was strolling the secondhand uh, book fair and, you know, thinking about books I should read and I, and I came across Hiroshima. Um, I thought to myself, you know, does this seem interesting? Like, why would I want to read about Hiroshima? You know, is there anything, is there anything that this book can teach me? Is this book interesting? And, and immediately I thought, okay, do you know anything about Hiroshima? Do you... Do you have any recollection of these events? Have you heard secondhand stories about these events? You know, Hiroshima wasn't too long ago, right? We're talking about 60, 70 years, uh, 80 years now, um, almost since Hiroshima. Uh, it wasn't too long ago. You know, these things are still quite fresh um, in the public psyche. We don't talk about Hiroshima as if it was this event thousands of years ago. Um, but at the same time, we don't necessarily talk about it either. So I wanted to to take a bit of a, a dive into into the actual events in 1945 and, and see what this guy was saying about it, see what John Hersey had to say about Hiroshima. Um, and another reason why I wanted to read this book is that I, uh, funnily enough, just wanted to be humbled in, in a specific way, in a certain way. Uh, I didn't necessarily want it in some weird masochistic kind of way. I just wanted to understand the um, the events which transpired in the 1940s around the, around the Second World War period um, some of the things, some of the some of the uh, thoughts, and some of the feelings which would have been circulating in the in, in society around that time, some of the time uh, time around of our, our grandparents, maybe not your grandparents, but certainly my grandparents. Um, <clears throat> and what what was generally the feeling in society after these events, especially after something as catastrophic as as an atomic bomb being dropped on a on a population of people, like that's some of the one of the most you know insane things that can even happen um you know i i believe our generation hasn't come across uh, hasn't experienced something as as as, as shocking and, and and gripping as a world war um and, and we're really fortunate for this i'm not saying that we should be go through something traumatic to quote unquote learn a lesson all i'm really saying and all i really think is that we as a, as a generation, our parent generation too, haven't experienced this large global unifying event. Of course, there's pockets of instability all around the world that's been continuous since the world wars. We have, uh, of course, civil wars which, which take place, displace civilians, cause refugees, immigrations and whatnot. And, and, and of course, you have the diaspora from these, from these war-torn countries spreading out and telling stories of their countries. But we haven't had a global unifying event where essentially the, the entire planet's population was at risk and was, and was in, 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 in a sort of suspension. Um, once you know, going back to the to the refugee crises that that, that have been taking place, Syria, you know, you have uh, various instabilities, Balkan wars. Um, you do have then the Cold War. Afghanistan has been a hotbed for so long. Um, you, you you do have members in society which walk around, which have come face to face with these traumatic events such as such as such as wars you know civil wars so they have um they have knowledge they have insight which many of us don't if we've grown, grown up here in the west in these in these safer countries in these countries which have which have experienced fortunately stability for such long periods of time and what what, what comes along with these people and, the, and their stories is a certain ethic and a certain and a certain way in which these people carry themselves okay they don't necessarily um walk about the same way we walk about this is this is what I this is what I found talking to refugees and and and, and people of this um, from from this background. They have I believe they have more of an appreciation for life because they've seen how how um, how how dangerous uh, political ideas can be, how dangerous nationalism can be. They've seen how easily life can be taken from you, especially individuals and people who have come from countries which were once flourishing and, and actually developed and civilized and beautiful, and then to have that country and have your whole livelihood stripped from you is something which is. Which you which you wouldn't really wish on anybody, and um, so the, the, there are these people in our society which which experience these events. 
However, for the most part, we, you know, as a generation, we don't, we don't come to face to face with this. And I think sometimes maybe we, we need to read about the events of the past and get a certain uh, perspective on life because things uh, geopolitically are probably more unstable than we really think. And things can take a turn any, any, in any direction. And, and it's sometimes these things are very hard to predict. So at least having a, an appreciation and a certain humbleness about our character and the way we carry ourselves, maybe we can we can get this insight from books and, and maybe we can get this insight from secondhand stories and at least uh, have have this in the back of our mind when potentially political leaders and 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 and, and, and um, influences in our society start making these decisions such as potentially dropping nukes on somebody or dropping bombs on a country maybe we can say hey like you know this is probably not a good idea i've heard about what happened in hiroshima i've heard about the displacement of civil wars let's not dive into this maybe there's other uh, measures that we can take to actually you know get our political goals um, answered and, and fulfilled so that was you know long story short that was one of the reasons why i wanted to read this book it's really to be humbled and to be to get some insight and to understand what actually happened in hiroshima so so john hersey is a journalist he's a writer and he went into hiroshima shortly after the the bomb was dropped the atomic bomb was dropped and he essentially went in there and gave his accounts he, he documented the events he he wrote down what he saw how he felt um, the concerns he had, and he and he put it all in paper in a very nice, concise, readable fashion. You know, this is not a this is not a three hundred, four hundred, five thousand, thousand page account of of what happened in Hiroshima. It's actually about one hundred and twenty pages long, and I think the last twenty or thirty pages are a are a uh, are him revisiting the uh, the Hiroshima event fifty years later on. Okay, so um, this is this is a sort of updated edition where where in nineteen eighty five he came in and wrote about Hiroshima. Um, 50 years on which is quite interesting as well you know you, so you get a, a bit of an account of how the society changed and developed and how it recovered and and some of the pitfalls and some of the good things about uh, about, about japan after this after this traumatic casualty <clears throat> and yeah so he went in there and, and he went in there quite quite honestly he didn't have some sort of political agenda he doesn't push any views in this book all he really gives is a quite humbling humane account of the events which happened he talks about things such as shadows being permanently uh, engraved into concrete because of the blast, the magnitude of the blast was so enormous that that people's shadows themselves were stained onto concrete. Now, I, I didn't think this was actually possible. I didn't think a shadow could actually be become imprinted on concrete because when you think about a shadow, it's really, a shadow is dependent on something being there. It's, it's something which always disappears, you know, so to have it engraved on the, on, on, on the concrete is something pretty horrific i think after I, I read that i was pretty shaken i didn't really know what to think about it um and then so he this is one of the things which he talks about you know so he, how how treacherous it was you know how devastating it was um people coming out of houses screaming the, the zones in hiroshima which affected how large the blast was you know him him sort of walking the streets and, and hearing these things and seeing people who have survived people who are just being completely wiped out um it's really an, an account and a, and a document of of the of the events in Hiroshima. He talks about how great the blast was, you know, how people were recovering from the blast, you know what I mean? All these sort of things, you know, which are all in this book. And, and he doesn't waffle on about it, but it's quite nice and concise and, and very, very impactful because um, one of the things which, which really is a bit disgusting is when journalists have a political agenda which they're really trying to push and then this, this political agenda or this or this personal agenda be it gets uh, it pervades the rest of the book or pervades the rest of the writing and, and it biases the writing and you can never really trust a journalist like this you know unless you of course are aware that they're, they're coming from a, a certain position then you can sort of filter these things out and not take everything for face value and john hersey didn't do this he simply gave a, an account of what happened and, and, and he didn't give one in a very uh, systematic, um, uh, sort of scientific way. He gave one in a very humane, um, honest, down-to-earth way. You know, he didn't overly intellectualize it. He simply said, hey, like, guys, uh, people are dying out here. People are suffering out here. You know, what, what compelled a, a country to do something like this? 
okay um he gives you a document and then with that document you can make your own decisions of whether this is actually an ethical event whether whether, whether it's a sufficiently um, moral act you know you can then make your decision whether it's even good to do these sort of things um, you can make your political decision after this with his document and that's what this this account gives you uh, it gives you the power to do it's, it's make your own opinion up make your own mind up and then and then ha- have, a, have a perspective on nuclear arms um of course, I think after reading this book, I was, I was, you know, even prior to reading this book, I was never really for nuclear arms. Okay, uh, the the discussion, uh, uh, you know, relating to whether or not we should use atomic bombs and nuclear energy for for war is, is a whole discussion in and of itself. However, you know, uh, to me, it, it re- revolves around that uh, concept of assured mutual destruction. Okay, so um, in some way, it's sort of safe that everyone has nuclear arms because. The use of of a, of, a, of a nuclear arm by one by one party by one country essentially assures that the other country will, will pretty much the other country will in retaliation use nuclear arms too or another country uh, unless they, they themselves get wiped out and because of, because both parties are using these nuclear arms you're probably going to lead to global destruction everyone's going to die you know there is no winning side when a, a whole glo- global nu- thermonuclear war takes place there is nothing which stops you know civilization from surviving at this point it's just sheer and utter chaos so the, the ethics of whether we should use it is a different story however um after reading this book i was i was sort of um it, it cemented my views on, on nuclear arms you know it cemented and cemented my current views on on using diplomacy as, as, as the as the first and measure and, and, the, and the most appropriate measure and really trying to get to a rational position and a logical position um <clears throat> About, about about using nuclear arms uh one thing which i really want to mention is that john hersey talking about the experiences of the of the japanese people in hiroshima he really summed up something which is which is quite interesting to, to think of to think about and to consider and it's that the people who were suffering from the from from the bomb and who had actually been hit by the bomb and who have survived he was saying that these people were, were actually um, the way they were understanding their event and their and their and their, and their condition was that they were almost considering it as a as a metaphysical event. They were almost seeing it as a spiritual event. You know, they were almost rationalizing this terror, this otherworldliness, in a sort of spiritual way. They weren't saying, "Oh my God, America, the the, the devils, the demons, the attackers, the the opponents." They weren't saying, "You know, let's fight them." They were almost to a certain extent, obliterated. You know, all they, they they were they were at ground level. They were saying this was a this is a purely metaphysical existential event. The, the way they they understood this event was was quite was 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 pretty shocking. Um, they didn't have any spite for the most part. They were simply completely shocked. It was, it was almost as if a, a tsunami or an earthquake had hit them, and that is something really 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 interesting and something which I think all of us need to consider and ponder. You know. When when a, when an event is so traumatic and so colossal and and magnificent, like something along those lines, you know, I feel like our faculties for hate and and, and revenge and whatnot just seem to disappear, and and there's nothing else but pure shock and terror. Um, it, it's something which is, which is very very interesting in this book. Um, it reminds me of 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 a book by Jean Pierre Dupuy. He's a philosopher from France. He believes in metaphysician. You know, and, and he works with. Um, climate change uh, activists and policies and whatnot however he wrote a book on the, essentially the metaphysics of tsunamis and that sounds quite funny to some people but when you think about it you have to uh you have to understand global catastrophes natural events you have to put it in your framework of of, of, of life you have to uh, digest it you have to deal with it somehow you have to cope with it and 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 I think this is one of the one of the topics which which Dupoy covers in this in his book Metaphysics of Tsunamis. And I think it'd be interesting to talk about some of the metaphysics of of of, of sort of the nuclear arms uh, dropped in Hiroshima because uh, I have a suspicion that a lot of the people understood this event um, in a qu- in quite a different way than um, than you would actually think. You, I think most people would want revenge and and be spiteful and whatnot, but. But perhaps you know when the when the bomb drops, all that is cl- is cleaned away in, in a clean slate. Um. So. Fifty years on, he came back also uh, to to talk about uh, Japan, how it recovered, and 
he gave his accounts you know people are dying from cancers some people are healing miraculously some people are uh, rebuilding some people have started all over again entire families have been wiped out i mean very you know a lot of good a lot of bad um, probably more bad than good um he, he he points out how japan hasn't necessarily taken any action or anything along those lines to the the, the japanese people themselves don't really seem to be um, completely against america despite what they did uh he, he just simply gave an account of what's happening and how, how people are recovering and how the country's rebuilding itself and, and the certain things which are taking place. And it was interesting to see, you know, I mean, I mean it's, it's great to see that people are recovering and lives are coming back together only after 50 years, you know, something such as an atomic bomb being dropped on a nation, you would think that they'd be displaced for essentially um, infinity forever. However, people get on with their lives, people recover, people are resilient, you know, people are so strong and people are, have have a lot of power within themselves, and especially if it's a, if if it's their volition to 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 get better and 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 climb up from from such an events. Um, so yeah, John Hersey, Hiroshima, um, extremely humbling, extremely impactful, um, extremely important. I think for our generation because we need to understand that that uh, you know I think fighting wars and, 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 and declaring war on certain countries is, is very real. You know, even though we haven't had a global um, alarming uh, disaster such as, a, such as a world war um, confront us, we still have to understand that it's not, a, it's not outruled, you know what I mean? It's not out of the question. It's still possible that these things happen and we have to have a very, very humble approach towards this, you know? And I think for the most part, our generation is compassionate, compassionate but we have to, I think, sometimes... Uh, check ourselves and check our positions and and make sure that we're moving w- with our with our with our feet correctly on the ground and we're not making these claims and these these propositions which are going to lead to something such as Hiroshima I mean you have people theorizing that Hiroshima wasn't even necessary you know the the, the war had already been won so why even drop the the bomb on, on on such a country you know and in such a city and just kill millions of people um, why would you do that so that's one of the one, one of the questions it's, 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 it's a whole bag of questions which emerge from from a book such as this and it leaves you thinking more and more more and more um, I'll recommend this to anybody. In fact, uh, the, on the front page, it says everyone able to read should read it. And um, I agree. It's a short book, very, very short book. Gives you a very concise, impactful um, punch of, of, of humbleness. <laughs> to put it that way, I don't know if that's even a word, but um, it's important. It's relevant as ever. Um, and it's a book which shouldn't be forgotten, especially because it's one of the biggest disasters when it comes to when it comes to wars and and, 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 and geopolitical movements. Um, I want to leave you guys with um, a video, um, which is uh, Oppenheimer, uh, one, of the, one of the physicists who was involved in um, the creation of some of these nuclear arms. And uh, I want to leave him with a video f- um, f- from him talking about how he felt. Um, and it's really just him quoting an excerpt from the Bhagavad Gita, and I think this video is pretty shocking and pretty chilling. Um, you know, it's 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 hard to see an intellect such as him come to this conclusion. So yeah, I hope everyone has a great day, and um, hope you uh, you know have got something from this video. And yeah, uh, until next time. We knew the world would not be the same. silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we 